Hi everyone and welcome back to another episode in our Unreal Engine 4 tutorials. This episode was voted on by my patrons and my YouTube members so thank you very much for those who have supported me and casted their vote for this month's video. And this month's video is all about level changing and more specifically how to change between one level to the other in different locations so for example if you enter the door in one level it'll take you out to a different door in the second level um, and so on and so forth now when you typically by default enter a new level it spawns you right at the start where you have one single player start what we're looking at doing today is make it so you can spawn in multiple places predetermined by the game designer so to begin I have already made two levels. I've got map one here, which is the default third person template. And I've also got map two, which is a variation of that uh, with a nice pink sky. So you can tell the difference between the two nice and easily. I've also started putting in these doors and these doors are very simple models. I just made very quickly or actors together I made um, here. Okay. And all they are is two meshes with the water texture on it and a trigger box around my portal which will help me teleport between the two levels so I'm just going to go back to my first map and our job today is to first of all begin by putting those doors in so I'm going to drag these doors in so I'm going to put one up here like so and I'm going to put another one here Okay, you can go anywhere you like, does not matter. Now, open up your doors, uh, or whatever you have that is your, uh, going to teleport the player to another level. Um, if you're going to have multiple different types of things, you use inheritance. So you have uh, the parent doorway, uh, or parent portal, and then you have sub uh, portals or sub doorways that will inherit all of this code we're about to do onto them. Okay, so you only have to do it once and you just use the children and they'll work just the same okay so what we need to do on here is set up two variables the first one is going to be a ID so I'm going to put in a door ID and this could be numerous things it could be an integer I'm going to do an integer today it could be uh, like numbers or it could also be string or name uh, it could be whatever you like so for example actually let's do name let's do name here uh, do a name and I can go instance editable tick that box there and I can leave it as none as a default value next I want to be able to choose what level this door is going to open the world to so for that I'm going to use an enumerator so if I right click and go into my blueprint section I'll see enumeration and in here I can do level list enum and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a list of all the levels I can possibly have in this enumerator. So I'm going to click new and type in the name of my first level, map one, and my second level, map two, and click save. Now, enumerator is basically a list that allows you to select from that list. So I can add a new variable now to my doorway and call it destination and the variable type for this now is going to be that level list enumerator that we just made I want to tick the instance editable for this as well and click compile and you can see what I mean the drop down so you can have all your levels all your different rooms set up down here and it makes it a lot easier and a lot quicker just to select which one you want so with those now ticked on editable that means I can click on these doors inside the world and I can change their details of the door ID and the map that I want to go to. So we're coming on map 1, so therefore this door is going to take us to map 2. And ID, and as I said, it could be anything. Um, so I can put in like kitchen, for example. And this one, I'm going to do map 2 again. And of course, one bathroom. Okay, um, and then I'm going to the second map. Click save, 
and likewise we're going to go here map one and this one's going to be the kitchen so this is what's important is making sure that you have a an accompanying door on the other side okay i'm gonna go back to map one and click save okay so that's that so the way it works is that when you enter a door we want it to before teleporting you to the next level is to uh, store what door you've gone through and we're going to do that on something called a game instance now the reason why we're using a game instance is because a game instance is persistent across the whole entire game so i can put stuff in it and temporarily store it likewise i can also put it into to a save game object so if i want to save the last level i was in or the level I just entered, I can put that into a save game object as a way of quickly saving my progress in the game. So I'm going to put it into a game instance. So for this, I need to make a new grouping class. And I'll search for all classes down here and type in instance. And click game instance. And I'm going to call it my game instance open this up and we want a variable in here that is going to be storing our door ID and that was a name so choose the name and click on pile and that's all we have to do there close that and now we want to make sure our um, our game is actually using our game instance so go to edit project settings click on maps and modes and in here you'll find which game instance is going to be using so down the bottom it says game instance class you want to choose your one you just made so my game instance and just close that tab so now it's going to be using this game instance that we just made so now we have to tell it to when we enter the door to store that variable on our game instance so open up your doorway and click on your port on your trigger volume, which is my portal trigger in this case, and right click in the space here and do begin overlap event. So two things we've got to do. First of all, we have to tell it to store the door ID onto the game instance, and then we have to tell it to change the level. So first things first, we have to get the game instance and this is a generic game instance return value we need to get a specific one so we need to cast it to my game instance and as my game instance I can set door ID and that can match what I've written as a verbal so that's the first job this is getting hold of the game instance casting to it so we get from the generic to the specific and then setting its variable door ID to match what we've got set on our door and now we need to open up the level so that's quite simply done we go open level and you'll see a level name for a um, parameter and for this we can use a destination drag this down which we get and in here I think you can go to name you can however you'll find I'm not too sure why it does it but um, it, if you go straight from enum to name um, it doesn't work you want to go to string first of all so enum to string and then go to name and plug that in like so Okay, close this and that's all we have to do for our door um, object. So we're halfway there, we've got the doors, they should teleport us now to the next world. Let's test that out, and there you go. But you see it spawned me at this default location, which is not what I want. I'll go back through here, like so. 
I want it now to change where I'm spawning. So that is handled by using the player start icon um, actors. So you want to place a player start actor, uh, roughly where you want the door to be, and orientate it so the arrow is facing the correct way. If you see it comes up a bad size, it's because it's clipping through the floor. Just rise it up until it's not. Now, when clicking on these player starts, you'll notice something. On the right hand side in the object uh, details, you'll see player start tag and it says none. What you want to do is type in here the name of the door that you want your player start to be associated with. So that's a kitchen. This player start tag will then be matching it with kitchen. And this one will be the same for bathroom. You want to go into the other map. And do the same for these ones. I've already placed these in. I'm just going to change the tag for these. That's bathroom there. Bathroom. Yeah, kitchen. Okay. So now we've got these player start set up. We have to now determine which one is the correct one we want to go to. So the way we do that is handled in a couple of places. Uh, first and foremost, it will be in the game mode. So if you go into your blueprints and find your game mode, which is third person game mode in my case, and in here we can override a function on here which handles the choosing of which player start to use. So on the right hand side, we say left hand side, you see functions. If you hover over it, you'll see the word override. Click on this and you'll find a big list. Now these are all functions that are already been made and already sort of hidden away on the game mode. But we can just override them, which is basically um, rewrite them. Okay. So here you'll find one called choose player start. Click on this and you'll see the function be remade. So it's here that we're doing uh, all the legwork to choose which one we want to go on. So when we do choose player start, we want to first of all get the game instance because we need to get hold of that door ID that we've stored whilst traveling. So you cast that to my game instance. And from here, we can uh, get door ID. And from there, we can Um, we can then use that in comparing all the player starts. So we have to get all the player starts, get all actors of class, and choose your player start as the actor. Let's get a list of all the player starts in your level. So we'll go for each one of these ones for, for each loop. And we want to check it, its door ID, uh, sorry, its, its tag is equal to the door ID. So with the array element, drag this out. And you want to get the player start tag. And you want to compare it with it equals to the door ID. This will go into a branch because we're making a decision and if it's true go to return node and plug your array element into the return value there now if it's coming back out as uh, at the start of the game for example your game instance won't have a door ID it'd be none so we want to by default select the normal default player start so when it's completed we're going to come down here and we want to say if we can just copy and paste the return node. Like so I oh, want. There we go. Copy it goes into there. And we're gonna choose the out actors array. 
and just get a copy and I'm just going to use the zero index, the first index. Click compile and we're done here. So that's it, that function overwritten. We now need to be able to use that function inside our levels. So when a level loads up, it choose it, it calls that choose um, player start. So for each level, each one has to be the same. So open level blueprint. And we'll right click, begin play. And from here, you want to get the game instant, uh, game mode, sorry. And from there, you want to type in find player start. And this find player start basically runs that choose uh, player start. Um, almost choose. The choose is already running. Now choose, and this actually picks whatever that has been chosen in the other function. Um, hope that makes sense. So find player start returns an actor, and from the actor we can get its transform, like so. And we can now set the player start by getting the player character. and setting their transform to be the same as the player start there. Click compile and we need to copy and paste that into our other map. Like so. Click compile and let's test this out. So if I go through this door, it'll take me through this one. Double check that it still works both ways. And if I go through this door, it should take me out the other door on the other level. Oh, wait for it too quickly. There you go. Now, if you're loading a level which is quite complex, you probably want to hide it with a level a loading screen. Um, but this is quite instantaneous and therefore not an issue, it's quite quick to load. So there you go. And that is how you load levels up and spawn in different locations. And you can use a very similar technique to get like the multiplayer, if you want to do multiplayer and choosing spawn locations, it's a very similar technique um, for that as well. But there you go, that's all there is to it. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, please leave a comment below. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. Um, if you want to see these videos early, well before anyone else, head over to patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley. And you can subscribe for at least a dollar. Um, and that will get you access to all the videos nice and early. As well as access to the Discord community, as well as many other benefits as well. Thanks very much for watching, and I hope to see you all next time. Bye bye.